and you are in for a treat and an experience. I, we're very proud to introduce you to Sweet Dreams. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you our afternoon's directors, Rob and Lisa Fruchtman. Well, thank you. Thank you all for coming. We're thrilled that you're here, and uh, we hope you like the movie. And we'll be talking more with you after. We hope you can stick around. We have a special treat when the film is over, in addition to the Q&A. So. Uh, if you don't know this already, this is our New York premiere. So we're very happy that you're the first New Yorkers to see the film. So thank you for being here. From the film, Clementine, Marta, and Marta. strong, resilient women. Inspiring. And that's our Q&A. Thank you. <laughs> um, we'd like to just say a couple of things about the film. We're so thrilled that our three drummers are here, and they're going to be joined by three more in Amsterdam next week when we go there. Um, but it's so exciting for us to have them here, because we wanted you to hear what the drums really sound like in 3D. Uh, but if anyone has any questions, oh, and also we have Alexis, Meeson, and Jenny. Where's and Jenny, Jenny from Blue Marble Ice Cream. From Blue Cream. Marble. Come on stage. Sorry, we have not introduced her, is Kiki's sister. Kiki just had a baby. And so Vivienne, who speaks English, is here. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, in 2004, of course, yeah, there was like an obje objection, a rejection from the men. They thought like women came to invent their world. But uh, once they see the performance, they were so, so supportive. And of, of course, uh, even the government supported the project. So this was really wonderful. Many teachers from uh, the west of Africa, we have the sound from Rwanda, but we mixed with other sound. We have, for example, the Didi Dudundiai. He's a famous drummer from uh, um, Senegal. He, he came to train the uh, ladies and uh, girls for this uh, specific sound. So we mixed with the uh, Rwandan and the West African sound. And Burundian too, I think, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you stumble upon these drummers, uh, this troupe? How did you decide you were going to make this, this movie twofold? And well, we heard the story uh, about how Kiki, uh, who was a visionary theater director and playwright, came to meet Jenny, who is in another part of her life, an actress. And uh, after, the uh, after the drumming troupe had been started in 2005, they met in 2008 and uh, cooked up the idea of the ice cream shop. And when we heard this story, we just thought it was an amazing window into looking at Rwanda, looking at how people rebuild themselves after traumatic conflict. And both of the ice cream story and the drumming story, even though they seem very disparate, they are about the same thing. Um, and so we saw this as an incredible filmable opportunity. Then we went to Rwanda not knowing what we would find. At the very beginning of the ice cream initiative, we got to know the women. And we went back over the course of a year and a half, four times, spending about five or six weeks each time. And uh, actually, we filmed the month of mourning very late, a year into the process, because it's a very difficult thing to, to experience and to film. And we wanted to know the women better when we did it. So it was, it's been a two, 
two plus year process of, of weaving these stories together. What was it like when Kiki first came to you? Did you, what, did you jump on the idea right away or did it take some convincing? We, jump, we jumped on the idea right away. <laughs> It was something that you don't say no to. And we actually, when we started our ice cream company, we thought, oh, we want to call it Blue Marble, and it'll be named that way because it's like the planet Earth, and it's groovy, and it's organic, but it's also somehow we wanted to incorporate a awareness of the world to all our young customers. And it was, it was always sort of, I don't know, we felt like we wanted to do some project like this. And so then when it came to us, we said, oh, this is, this is a project perfect for our company. We both gave 200% uh, to our business and to our, uh, the nonprofit. But essentially, we, we, weren't, we, weren't, we realized we were a long way off from being able to make enough money in the business to fund such a project. So we started a nonprofit called Blue Marble Dreams. Uh, and that we raised the, the funding through donations for that. But, but you know, I, I just want to say, you know, the new Rwanda, uh, especially the Kagame government, wants to promote development, trade, not aid. They want to, he wants to wean the country off aid by 2020. And uh, it's great. And, you know, there are many projects happening there. Um, we're proud to be associated with a new Rwanda project called Grace Hightower, De Niro, and Coffees of Rwanda, which is... Uh, Using uh, working with cooperatives, coffee growers in Rwanda to create uh, jobs there and also bring you wonderful coffee. I think there are 500,000 families in Rwanda that grow coffee. So it's a very, very important market. And actually, they're here, and they're going to also give you some samples of coffee afterwards. As will Blue Marble Ice Cream. As will Blue Marble. <laughs> Uh, basically, she said, like, this is the first time she has seen the m movie for, uh, like, the entire movie. And she feels very happy to share her story with the world. And she hopes that the movie will be, uh, like, uh, you, the screening will be, like, uh, in many places in the world so that she can share her story with other people. Uh, another thing which is very important to her is, like, uh, many people think, like, after genocide, li uh, life stops in Rwanda. There's nothing else. So now, with the movie, uh, it shows that there is something positive in Rwanda, especially uh, the empowerment of women in the country and also uh, the development of the country. But uh, it, it is also, the movie also shows like uh, in Rwanda, women can do many things that have been pro prohibited from them, especially the drum. And also she says something very funny that uh, women can also eat goat, which was also prohibited. Goat, goat. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are brother and sister. And uh, this is the first time we collaborated, that we've been together in the movie business for a long time, although we've done different things. I've been a a feature narrative editor, and Rob started in sound, but went on to become a documentary director. So um, it seemed like we would both bring different things to the film, and I think we have. We, uh, we were together completely in Rwanda, and then we both edited, but on different coasts. I was in California, he was in New York, and through, uh, through G-Chat and sending things back and forth and clone drive, we managed to edit this movie together. And uh, we're still speaking. I'm, I'm older, but he's taller. And this is the way the balance of power works. No, she's, she's my big sister, but she learned to listen to me. Uh, and actually, I learned to listen to her, which is amazing. Uh, but it did go quite well. And it's partly because, um, you know, r apart from the fact that Lisa and I are siblings, I mean, I have great respect for Lisa as a, as a collaborator and as a filmmaker. And I think we both shared that respect with each other, even if we disagreed. So if you are thinking of making a film with your sibling, <laughs> uh, be sure that you like their work. <laughs> and we want to thank you all for sharing your story. Thank you.